Today we're going to be making some hobbit holes, using a few different variations of texture pastes and flockings to make some awesome display pieces that double as terrain for your game. Hi, I'm Seb and I make stuff. These models are all 3D prints. I've printed them out using resin on an Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. This printer has been around with me for about two years now and is still going strong. The models are designed by Broken Anvil Miniatures. And I believe the original concept is for them to be Harangon homes for a Feywild encounter. But to me, they just scream hobbit holes. I love them because they're a great excuse to experiment and see what you can do with a different kind of basing material. I'm gonna use a whole heap of different flocks and static grasses, as well as a handful of different types of texture paste to see what I can come up with. Let's jump into it. Once I had them printed out, I gave them a hit with a cheap gray primer and then coated them with a Citadel Wraithbone White. To start the paint job, I used a Citadel Gore Grunter Brown contrast paint. I love this for wooden effects as it just seeps in nicely to all of the gaps and gives a really nice effect on top of the Citadel Wraithbone White base. I also came in with some Cygore Brown on some of them to mix up the colors of the doors as a way to add some variation to my hobbit holes. And then I grabbed a cheap brown acrylic paint to give a base layer over all of the mud sections of the hobbit holes. I'm using this cheap brown paint even though it's a little bit glossy because I'm going to cover all of this up. This is really just there to make sure that if anything is missed, it doesn't show through as white. I'll repeat the process on the other models and then I'll clean away the excess paint before I make a mess of things. And one of them is gonna get something different with this Vignettes Acrylic Mud. This stuff is a nice gray mud that I've used in some previous builds, but I wanna try something different for these Hobbit holes, giving one a bit more of a stony, dark theme, and then leaving them all to dry. Next up, I'm gonna grab some Tamiya Soil Effects. I've used this a lot in the past as well, and this will be my main base over the general muddy Hobbit holes. And like before, repeating this over the different models, covering up all of that original cheap acrylic brown. Then using that original grey texture paint to put some variation in the ground and adding some paths in front of the doorways. Then allowing everything to dry before adding on the next layer. Five minutes later. And now that they're all dry and the textures are sitting on nicely, I'm gonna try an experiment taking a Citadel gold paint and adding some golden veins onto the gray rock texture that I used on this one. Going for a bit of an experimental look and trying out some different designs to see what I can come up with for future builds. And while we wait for that to dry, I'm going to add some Agrelin Earth texture paint onto the rest of these. This dries with a nice crackled mud effect and I like the idea of telling the story that the hobbit holes are built up with a base of mud. Some of them just having a few splotches to act as repairs and one completely covered like it is a brand new freshly built home. And now back to the experimental base. I'm gonna grab out some Mordant Earth Technical Paint. This is another crackle paint but with a much blacker finish. I'm gonna be covering the grey and gold hobbit hole in this, trying to give it that really dark feel, but with the small crackles of gold hopefully appearing through the base once this dries. By adding a nice thick layer, the cracks should come through very, very prominent, showing those golden veins hidden away under the top layer of dark stone. The following day, and the next day, they have dried beautifully, really showing off the golden veins hidden away underneath this volcanic looking rock. The originals have also dried really nicely, giving us that nice crackled mud texture, like freshly dried mud piled up to make their homes. Now I'm gonna grab out a bronze color and paint up all of the metal finishings with the door handle and hinges then coming in and adding a little bit extra onto all these nails before repeating the process across all four of my hobbit holes. Mm -hmm. 
Next up, I grabbed a few contrast paints and added some color to a few of these little printed details that remained on the miniatures. A lot of these will get covered up on the other ones, but for this guy, I wanted it to pop. I then came in with a brown wash to add a little bit more depth and shadow onto the gray path at the front, then using this around the door frames to give a little bit more variation in the wood colors on this darker model. And now that we have the bases of all four done, it's time to start adding details to the first build. This one is completely covered in mud, and my idea is that it's the freshest build of the lot. So I'm going to grab some towel light okra and actually repaint the wooden door to make it look nice and fresh. Then dry brushing this over the rest of the wooden textures to add a little bit of a highlight. And now it's time to add a few extra details to really sell these in a miniature environment. So we're going to grab out the matte Mod Podge and start to add this onto all of our bases. Once we have a good chunk of this down on the miniature, we're going to add a little bit of dirt and a few small stones before coming in with our first layer of static grass and foam flocks and another layer of some small dirt pieces to fill in the gaps. For this freshly built hobbit hole, I'm only going to be adding this stuff around the very base as if it hasn't had the chance to grow all the way up to the top of the dirt mound yet, seeing as this is all freshly dug up and laid. Then tapping off the excess and allowing it to dry. While we move on to the next model. This one only has a few batches of mud, so I'm going to really give this one a whole lot of flocking. I start by pouring it onto this one before covering up all of the areas that don't have mud with a thick layer of glue really working my way up the sides towards the top of the mound, as if to look like this one has sat there growing for quite some time. And to really give this one the overgrown look, I'm gonna mix up some fresh foam flocking, adding a little bit of dirt and small pebbles and static grass before really piling this over the entire miniature, trying to get as much life into this model as I possibly can. As I go, just adding more and more glue and more layers of my natural mix. Until I have a nice green overgrown hobbit hole that I can start adding some grass tufts to. And as always, I tend to go overboard at this point. So I keep grabbing out different types of grass tufts to add as much natural variation as I can, sticking some down that have their own element and then super gluing the rest before moving on to the flowers. Again, tending to go overboard, but that's half the fun when making this kind of whimsical fantasy build. Again, bringing in some different colors because nature tends to follow its own rules. Rather than all being one uniform color, we want to bring in as many different types of elements and shapes and textures as we possibly can, because this really brings in that true wild look. And finally, for our darker build. This one to me felt like it belonged in an underground cave more than in a wild meadow. So I'm just going around the edge and adding in a pile of stones and dirt. Giving me a very different aesthetic than any kind of hobbit hole that I've ever seen, but something fun to throw down on the table and keep my players guessing. So we have our freshly built hobbit hole with a slight bit of growth up the sides, but mostly covered in its fresh dry mud. At this point, I realized that the door was a little bit clean. So I grabbed out the Agrax Earthshade and added a little bit more detail onto the door. Then we have our wildly overgrown traditional looking hobbit hole with a bunch of wildflowers and life. But it was missing a little something. So I grabbed out all of my tiny bits that I've 3D printed on my resin printer in the past and pulled out a few little creepy crawlies to add onto this build. Throwing in a little snake my classic tiny little green tree frog, a small smattering of mushrooms, 
and finally a small butterfly on the top. And for the final stage, I just went around and added a few tiny little details on top of all these mushrooms and painted some eyes onto my little creepy crawlies. And just like that, we have three completely different designs for these little hobbit holes. I've done a few of these in the past and I've scaled them to be the perfect size to fit into these display jars that I've made in previous videos. So they sit nicely on my shelf. Again, we have our freshly built mud pile, a nice overgrown existing home, and finally the experimental piece with that awesome gold fleck underneath the black crackle paint. This one is definitely for a special environment, but I think I'm going to use this effect in future builds. I'm really happy with how these turned out. Making a few different options is always fun. The other advantage of having a whole heap of different types is that I can throw them down in any gaming situation where I feel they're appropriate. I especially love the black crackle paste over top of the gold streaks. I think I'm going to have to use this for some caves or other underground environments. And for those of you who don't have a 3D printer, I think I'm going to make some of these in the future using just foam and sculptor mold to show that you don't need to print everything. A lot of this stuff can be handmade. It's also a lot of fun to make them yourself because you get to go crazy and make a lot more variation. But for now, this will do me just fine. I hope you guys have gotten a good bit of inspiration out of this and I'd love to see what you can come up with in the same vein. If you'd like to see anything else in the future, let me know in the comments below and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, never stop making stuff.